Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor right now and subscribe to our YouTube channel here at Watchbox Reviews. Then I can deliver watches like this Grand Seiko Snowflake to your inbox on a daily basis. If you like our watches, you can see them, you can buy them on thewatchbox.com. Buy, trade, and sell luxury watches on thewatchbox.com. Okay, we've revisited the Snowflake because in 2017 the dial changed and we love the Snowflake. So here is the Grand Seiko Spring Drive Automatic SBGA 211 Snowflake circa 2017. Of course, the change across the line for 2017 was that Grand Seiko supplanted the standalone Seiko script at 12 o'clock on the dial. So SBGA 011 becomes the 211 and the watch we see here. On my wrist, 16 centimeters in circumference, this titanium watch is easy to wear. First, there's the lightness of it. In titanium, which Grand Seiko calls high intensity titanium, figure it's something chemically in the neighbor of grade five. It's just a feather on the wrist, or perhaps more apropos, a snowflake. In terms of size, it's a versatile size. 41 millimeters has to be considered somewhere between a traditional size and a modern size. For a dress watch, it would be big. For a sports watch today, it's a little bit small, and this watch straddles the world of both, being 100 meters water resistant and automatic, but not luminescent, so it can't be a pure sportster. Lug to lug, you're gonna find that it's an easily wearable watch. 48.5 millimeters, means you can easily wear this one with a handsome proportion and wrist stance on a wrist as small as 14 centimeters in circumference, in my experience. Now, it does have solid end links about its bracelet, so it extends a bit beyond that measurement to uh, 52 millimeters across the wrist. That just helps it to attain a modern stance. It doesn't really affect the fit in any detrimental fashion. In terms of thickness, it's not a thin watch, but a 12.8 millimeters thick with a generously sloped case flank and matching conical bezel, it will slide underneath any dress cuff jacket or shirt beneath. Let's take a quick look at this bracelet and this lug interface because one of the undersold aspects of the Snowflake is the camber of the case. Look at it from side to side. It's almost like, dare I say it, a titanium banana drooping around the wrist on both ends such that it's almost like a Franck Muller Curvex case. It has that same curved tonneau profile about its back. So this is a watch that wears more compact than its bare size. Even if your wrist is smaller, give this one a chance because the way it's shaped, it's probably going to wear more compact than you imagine. Now the watch is off the wrist so we can get close, give ourselves a little bit more light, a little bit more focus, and there we are. Okay, Grand Seiko naturally investing a little bit more hand finishing in its watches these days than you're going to find from the big boys like Breitling, Rolex, and Omega in Switzerland. But that's fine. The Swiss can slack. In Japan, hand finished cases and bracelets are still the rule. As you can see, a handsome combination of satin and finish. Look at this bevel that runs along the links. That's the kind of look that has been gone from Rolex watches for a generation. Nicely executed, it's a polished transition between a satin finished flank and a satin finished top. A nice interspersing of polished and satin elements on the hoods. If you look at the bottom, plenty of daylight between the links so you can rest assured that it vents the wrist on a hot day, it aerates the wrist. You'll also note that there are large hollows between the links to avoid a pincer effect such that it won't pinch skin, it won't pull hair. Because this is a watch that retails for $5,800 US, the bracelet is sized with pins and sleeves rather than screws, but that's really the only compromise of any kind. The clasp uses a twin trigger mechanism, so I always prefer that to friction fit and the cheap stamped clamshell that seems ubiquitous even in the $6,000 range among Swiss watches. So you get twin triggers, you must positively disengage this clasp to open it. Clasp in titanium, bracelet in titanium, watch in titanium. And let's get close and take a look at the titanium. The case is nuanced with polished bevels, polished flank, satin finished lug hoods, polished bezel. The case flank polishing is Grand Seiko's signature Zeratsu polish, which is achieved by manually holding the surface directly against the milling equipment. This is done by eye, it's done by feel, and it's amazing that from side to side, the dimensions, the bevels, the actual optical quality of the metal is identical. Considering this is done by hand and eye, you would expect there to be some imperfection or asymmetry in either form or finish, but there is none. It is millimetrically identical, and that's a wonderful thing, because you are actually getting a watch that is hand-finished 
at a price point where you can maybe consider a new Rolex Oyster Perpetual 39. Grand Seiko gives you a lot more. And you can see inboard of the bezel, which is shallow and conical, there is the Snowflake dial. And Snowflake is not a collector nickname. That is the nomenclature assigned by Grand Seiko itself to this particular dial because the six steps involved in creating this textured and ridged white profile are designed to approximate the look of blown snow outside the Shiojiri Nagano headquarters where the watches are actually made. So a little bit of nature influence in the design of the dial and a finish that you will not find on a Swiss watch. Grand Seiko dials punch way above their weight. I would argue that there are many aspects in which Grand Seiko has not quite equaled Rolex, but with respect to dial, I give the folks from Japan the upper hand over Geneva. First, there's the texturing, which is gorgeous, but the hands and the indices deserve to be mentioned. You can see these are all hand-applied indices. They're all faceted and diamond polished, and they have differential finish about their sides, satin and polished with sharp and even facets. Again, that's something that only the hand and eye of the artisan can achieve. The hands at center are just as impressive. There's a counterweighted lancet style steel hand that has been heat blued in a kiln, not chemically blued. And you'll note that the Dauphine hands at center have been polished and beveled about their flanks. Again, all of this being done mostly by eye and artisanal knowledge. Very impressive on a sub $6,000 watch when new power reserve scale inset to add a different focal plane to the dial. And there's an aperture for the date. I prefer bordered or framed dates rather than simple cuts in the dial. The cut seems to be severe. It seems to be jarring. It seems to be déclassé. Here we have something that looks and feels upscale as well as balancing robustly the nine o'clock index. The crown is screwed down, and you can see it has a little bit of a countersink, so it sits nestled in the flank of the case, a little bit of protection against shearing. Through the case back, you can see the spring drive caliber. Now, this is a spring drive automatic caliber 9R85, 30 joules, watchmaker manufactured, watchmaker adjusted. It is a fascinating, mechanically powered hybrid of mech and quartz. So let's take a look at it from a couple of angles. Three-day power reserve, automatic winding. What you have here is a spring that is manually or automatically wound. It acts through a conventional drivetrain that is pivoting on lubricated jewels, just as you'd find in a Swiss automatic. And then it has hands that are powered by the collected spring energy of the main spring acting through the drivetrain. But between the hands and the barrel, there's this governing wheel that moves only in one direction. It's not a bouncing balance like a Swiss movement. Rather, it's a governor that creates an induced current from the spring energy of the mainspring barrel. The motion of the wheel creates that induced current which wakes up a quartz oscillator. The quartz oscillator then creates a back EMF to slow down the governor wheel when it gets too fast, regulating the speed of the discharge of the energy from the spring in the mainspring barrel. So you have no battery, you have no capacitor, you have only spring storage of energy and mechanical drive of the hands. But the benefit of spring drive is first this ghostly glide of the hand. There's absolutely no stop start. It's the only continuously moving hand in high horology, along with a Piaget knockoff that was scared scarcely made and rarely purchased, but not only do you have that smooth hand, you have quartz-like accuracy of plus or minus 15 seconds per month. That's the advantage of spring drive. It also has hacking or stop seconds when you pull the crown out, and it has a quick set so you can rapidly cycle the date wheel should the watch run down or encounter an irregular length month. This is a watch that puts it all together. If you're going to own just one Grand Seiko, this one's a legend. And in the 2017 to present dial variant, it's the latest version of a living legend. See this one and make it yours on our website.